So today I'm going to talk about um, a condition called left atrial nixoma. This is a review that is primarily directed towards medical students who are writing exams. So it's just going to be a brief overview with points that are relevant uh, to your exams. So what we'll start off with is uh, what is a left atrial nixoma, the pathology of the condition, what are the clinical features, the diagnostic methods that may be used in um, investigating this condition and how it is managed. At the end of it, I'll uh, share a link to some multiple choice questions that are included on the website. Uh, so you can try those and just test your knowledge at the end of this lecture. So we do know that cardiac tumors are a commonly asked question. If you look at your previous exam papers, you might find that cardiac tumors are asked as a long question or as a short question. And the most common cardiac tumor that is encountered in clinical practice is a left atrial myxoma. So the possible questions you can get asked are write a note on left atrial myxoma or discuss cardiac tumors. And this lecture is only a part of cardiac tumors. There are other ones as well, which we'll talk about in a separate lecture. And write a note on the most common cardiac tumor, which is the left atrial myxoma. These are the possible questions you may face. So this is uh, a line diagram of a myxoma. Uh, forgive, it, forgive my drawing, but uh, this is the best I could do. Basically, uh, the left atrial myxoma, as I've mentioned before, is a, the most common type of primary cardiac tumor that is seen in adults. Uh, it is predominantly seen in females between the ages of 30 and 60 years of age. How is it classified? Uh, broadly classified, you have sporadic and familial left atrial myxoma. 90% uh, of the cases are sporadic and usually these are solitary masses, whereas the familial uh, accounts for about 10% of the cases and tends to be multiple. Left atrial myxoma can of course be a part of other conditions, the Carney complex, uh, the Lamb syndrome and Main syndrome. These as well have been included uh, on the website. You can just have a look at them as well in the link below in the description. So the pathology uh, of the left atrial myxomas, it's very simple really. It's basically a gelatin-like structure that contains myxoma cells. And these are all within a stroma uh, containing glycosaminoglycans. This is a picture that I've taken from the Wikimedia Commons site. Uh, the important thing also to recall is, or remember rather, is that myxomas produce a vascular endothelial growth factor, which is responsible for its increasing size. So typically these start off as small uh, growths around uh, a few millimeters, but then can range between 115 centimeters in diameter. And about 30% of these have a friable surface, that is an irregular surface, and these are the ones that can embolize and cause complications. So if you look at the site and location, the most common site is the left atrium, uh, and it is attached to the fossa ovalis. If you remember your embryology, there is a tiny opening in the interatrial septum called the fossa ovalis. Uh, and this is where the myxoma originates from. You can also have right atrial myxomas as well, and also those arising from the ventricle. These are rare. The left atrial myxoma is the most common one. And the myxoma itself is attached to the fossa ovalis through a pedicle, which contains a fibrous and vascular tissue, this area over here. So what about the clinical features? In the early stages, uh, symptoms may not be present at all because the tumor is very tiny and doesn't really cause any sort of hemodynamic compromise. But later on, features of cardiac failure may develop, that's uh, such as breathlessness on exertion, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Some people can also have bilateral pedal edema, elevated JVP, uh, breathlessness, uh, which is also a problem when they're walking or at rest as well. But on auscultation, typically a tumor plop is heard in the early diastolic phase of the cardiac cycle. There may be associated mitral regurgitation because the uh, tumor can plop through the mitral valve and this prevents the mitral valve from closing and that's why there can be mitral regurgitation. And sometimes there are constitutional symptoms such as fever, malaise, joint pains, weight loss, which can sometimes uh, make one think of another condition such as autoimmune conditions or lupus or something like that. So it can be commonly confused with other conditions if you don't think in the right uh, direction and don't get the right tests done. So the complications are that the valve uh, can get occluded by the tumor. The tumor can go and sit in the valve over here if it is very large and can cause what we call functional mitral stenosis, not true mitral stenosis or the valve itself is defective or it can cause mitral regurgitation because it doesn't allow the valve to close properly and consequently there's leakage of blood back from the left ventricle to the left atrium. The other thing can happen is if the surface is irregular and if the mass is friable as seen in uh, familial uh, uh, 
plate left it in myxoma. In that situation, small bits of tissue from the surface of the myxoma can break off and can go to the brain and cause a stroke, or can go to the uh, arteries in the leg and cause a peripheral embolism. Now, neurological embolic events are the most serious complication that is seen in left atrial myxoma and is always a concern because these require invasive treatment straight away. So how is the diagnosis of left atrial myxoma made? Well, echocardiography is the primary way to diagnose. There can be blood tests you can do. There may be elevated total count and elevated ESR. Uh, sometimes there can be low platelet count or high platelet count. But the definitive test is a left atrial myxoma. And this is what we call a parasternal long axis view where you can see the left ventricle over here, the left atrium over here. This is the aortic valve and this is the mitral valve. You can see how the myxoma is sort of bobbing in and out through the mitral valve. Here it does separate out, but there are times where it goes and completely occludes the valve as well. And this is another view of the same patient. You can see that it is attached over here to the fossa ovalis. And this is the interatrial septum. This is the right atrium. This is the left atrium. And it is again flopping into the mitral valve all the way into the initial part of the left ventricle. So this is what a myxoma looks typically like on echocardiography. Now you can get other investigations done. You can get a cardiac MRI done, which is helpful in differentiating a myxoma from a thrombus, depending on the enhancement uh, that is seen on uh, MRI. Or even a CT may be done, but CT is not as helpful. And cardiac MRIs and CTs are both expensive tests, while as an echocardiogram is an inexpensive test and is uh, much more sensitive when it comes to picking up masses or especially a left atrial myxoma. So half the time, you may not even need to proceed with any further investigations. So once you've made a diagnosis, the management uh, of myxoma is fairly straightforward. There's nothing you can provide medically to patients. The only way to give them a uh, complete cure is to offer surgical excision through cardiopulmonary bypass. The mortality, uh, surgery, the surgical mortality is less than 5%, and the treatment is curative, and only around 1% to 2% of sporadic cases recur, whereas familial cases have a slightly higher recurrence rate of up to 20%. Now, this may happen um, because there is inadequate excision of the tumor, so it regrows, or that there were multiple tumors and microscopic ones that were not removed at the time, especially in familial cases. So that concludes the discussion on left atrial myxoma. I hope you find this le lecture useful. Um, please do visit the link in the description below for a few multiple choice questions just to test your knowledge, and some further reading links will also be included there. If you like this video and wish to know, uh, wish to listen to more of the lectures that we have in the future, please do subscribe to the channel and then click on the bell so that you get notifications in your account. Thank you very much.